Hello and welcome. In this video I will go over the process of making your own alpha textures in ZBrush and I will also be discussing some possible issues that you might have if you are doing this for the first time. So um, alpha textures can be very useful uh, if you need to or if you want to add details to a certain mesh uh, that are very repetitive and that would otherwise take a lot of time if you want to if you have to sculpt them manually one by one uh, so for instance I have this fish model and I would like to have some scale patterns uh, but I don't feel like sculpting them manually one by one so I will be creating an alpha texture for this now the first thing I need is some geometry to create this alpha texture on so I will be creating a new Z tool and instead of a sphere I will choose a plane 3D. Um, this could be a cube, could also be a plane, doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you do it on a flat surface because it's all about the detail that we are going to be sculpting on this. And before we start sculpting our scales we first need to make sure that this is set to polymesh 3D. Then you'll see that it disappears for a while but we can simply go out of edit mode by hitting T and draw it again. Don't forget to hit T again because we need to be in edit mode obviously um, if we want to sculpt. Then currently we can see that the active points are set to 1.089 and I think we will need a lot more uh, geometry if we want to make some crisp details that we can then afterwards reuse on a different model. So I'll be going to geometry and hitting divide a couple times but you'll see that the um, corners of my plane are rounded off right now which in the end will be an issue because if we want to convert this into a texture we want our plane to have the exact same shape of the texture um, being a square so I'll be going back to a fresh plane over here of course make polymesh 3d first there we go and before I subdivide, I will turn off the subdivide smooth modifier. And now you'll see if I divide my mesh and add some geometry, the corners stay nice and sharp. There we go. We can do this a few times until we feel like we have a sufficient amount of um, triangles or quads to start sculpting on. And now let's see. Let's hit P. To, to go into perspective mode and if we start sculpting on this I can see that my details are nice and crisp so we can start sculpting our details. We want to sculpt some scales and I will do this of course the workflow and how you want to sculpt your own details uh, that you require for your specific mesh uh, that's all up to you I will be sculpting scales um, and I'll do this by masking a circle starting by masking a nice circle some imperfections are perfectly okay that's what nature looks like and then I will go over to the move brush and slightly pull this out we can pull out stuff using the move tool by using the alt key if I use the press the alt key and drag I will drag the geometry towards my camera as you can see right here which can be very handy from time to time okay and I will repeat this process a couple times well want a second scale over here maybe sculpt out some in some detail left over from the previous scale go back to my move tool and by using alt and a big enough brush size I can just pull that detail out of there there we go nice and sharp and repeat this process let's say two more times you'll notice that I've been inverting the mask and I can do this by hitting control and clicking the background Okay, hit M, pull this out again, and there we go. And now I, for some typical scale feel, I want some overlap as well. So I'll make sure that my fourth scale just slightly, ever so slightly overlaps with my previous ones. First start by smoothing out all that detail. You can use the smooth brush uh, by hitting the shift key, of course and then just repeat the pattern one more time. Just pull that out. And 
And there we go, some nice scales. I'll maybe just use the H polish brush to smooth out some imperfections in the scales. But like I said, that's totally up to you. And there we go, all done. And before I turn this into a texture, I'm going to create a second plane and create a second type of um, detail, sculpted detail, but this time I will make sure that the detail goes inward instead of outward, because you can see that right now it goes outward, so we're talking about additive details, and now I want a subtractive uh, detail. So I'll go over to a fresh plane, there we go, again, uh, subdivide this, turn off smooth, divide it a couple times, there we go, just repeat that process. And now I'll just create a very simple uh, inward shape. There we go. Couple of holes. Doesn't really matter. I'll smooth them a little bit. There we go. I just want to make sure that they are deep enough in order for ZBrush to nicely capture all the detail. Okay? So now we have our scales in one Z tool and our holes that are going inward in a different Z tool. Okay, perfect. So next thing I want to do is capture this into a texture. So for this, I need to resize my document. And we can do this by going over to document and change the width and the height. But currently, um, constraint proportions is activated. So if we want to change the width and the height separately, we need to turn this off and then choose our width and height. For this, I'll choose a 512 to 512 size, because this is an ideal size for an alpha texture. Uh, we want game sizes, so we want a power of two for this, and 512 uh, or 1K, maybe 2K, 2K is maybe a bit big, but 512 should uh, do the trick perfectly. So I'm gonna hit resize. ZBrush is going to double check if we truly want to resize, and then we hit yes. We'll see that our image gets a little bit squished, and again, we can just, hit control N to clean this up and draw our plane once again, after which we hit T to enter edit mode. And then if we, by using shift and dragging our plane just a little bit, we can make sure that it's aligned perfectly with our canvas. Then finally we, ha we hit F, which makes sure that my plane is perfectly aligned with the size and shape of my canvas. So now everything is set up nicely uh, for ZBrush to capture this into a texture. This is a very easy process. We just show the texture that we want to capture, go over to alpha and hit grab document. Okay, and we'll see that our alpha, our height information appears in the alpha slot over here. I'm gonna do this a second time for my inward detail as well. Let's go over to alpha and grab document. There we go. And we can immediately spot two differences between the additive one and the subtractive one. The additive one has a dark background and the subtractive one has a white background, which makes sense if you think about it, because if we have a range from zero to one, zero being black and one being white, we need to be able to differentiate with height values to represent different heights in our geometry as well. So for this one, we add values. So we have brighter values on top of a darker background. And for the second one, we do it the other way around. Bear in mind that if you are happy with the details that you just sculpted, um, it might be a good idea to hit export and uh, export our texture to whatever file type you like. Um, allowing you to even add or change uh, things around in Photoshop uh, afterwards. Okay, so let's get back to our initial mesh, to our fish over here, and the, the size of our document is still set to 512 times 512, so I want to change that back to something slightly bigger. There we go, hit resize, hit control N to clean up our scene, draw the mesh, and hit T to enter edit mode. All right, so we have our fish right here. And now I want to test out my alpha texture. So I'm gonna hit the Z tool on which I want to add my detail. I'm going to grab the scale one. 
Uh, make sure that I use a brush. For this, I'm just going to use the standard brush. Z grab one. And currently it is set to dot, meaning that we can just sculpt like this, which might be nice in some cases if you want to add details like this, if you want to add a lot of details really, really fast. Um, but if we want to take a more specific approach, um, it might be nice to change dots to drag rect. Okay, and then we can just drag our detail on there and really specifically position it exactly where we want. That way I can ensure some variety in size uh, and rotation, uh, which is always nice. Okay, and you'll see that I can quickly add a lot of this repetitive detail uh, and cover my entire Z tool with it, uh, if, if that is what you want, of course. Now, um, on the other side, I will be testing out my second Z grab. There we go. And we will notice that this also works perfectly. We will also notice that the detail is a little bit less intense. So if we amp up the intensity and drag this again, we'll see that ZBrush automatically creates a circular sort of vignette around our brush alpha over here. Uh, and in order to counter this problem, now 100 might be a little bit intense, so I'm going to set this back to a normal but still pretty intense value, let's say uh, 50 for now, 51 should do the trick. And I'm going to go over to alpha and change my mid value, which if we remember represents black, I'm going to change my mid value to 100, meaning white. So that means that the value from which it starts to interpret is the same as the white in our alpha is the same as the, sur the surface on which we want to project this detail. And we will see that right now the intensity is nicely represented on our mesh. Now keep in mind that it's always a possibility to change the uh, brush that we're using. So in this case the standard brush, change this from add to sub, meaning instead of add detail, subtract detail, and then we can use this to add detail instead of subtract it. Okay, that was it. Thank you all for watching.